Good day everyone. Um, this is a very important video. I ask you please to share it. Please watch the complete video. It's not good that you would just screen through it. And what's it for? What's a full minute to get the real meaning? I didn't uh, I was going to do this video already last week, but uh, I just could not because I get very emotional when I speak about or read about Yeshua's sufferings. Yeah, so that is the reason why I did not do it last week, but I found courage to do so today. A cup that we cannot drink from. Yes, uh, the Passover that you uh, that was announced for March was not the correct Passover. And in the next video, I will explain the reason why. Somebody asked me, it's not, or said, it's not important when Jesus died, as long as we know. We have salvation. That is very important when he died. That is very important. Yeshua's dates and appointed times is also very important. There is blessings in it in his appointed times. But if you do it outside his appointed times, but having said that, I'm going to share that in a short video uh, uh, after this one. So the next, the, the real Passover is April 26. And uh, this year I'm going to do the, the proper Seda uh, that Jesus did in his days. And I'm also going to show you a video where uh, a demonstration of how Jesus did it in his day, the night before his uh, crucifixion. Yes, this is concerning Exodus 6, 6 to verse 7. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. This is the meaning of these four, four, four cups. I will rid you out of your bondage. I will redeem you with a stretched out arm. I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God. This is the four statements from Exodus 6 to 7. However, there is not just, as you see in that uh, clip, there is not just four cups, but actually five cups. But there is a fifth cup, and that cup has a promise. The fifth cup has a promise, a cup of God's wrath, and that's what it is about people. And that cup is actually called the cup of Elijah. Now, most of the Jewish people do not realize what they are asking for. And I'm going to explain that to you now in my notes. They're expecting uh, uh, the cup of uh, Elijah to come. And on the table every year, this cup is turned around. Uh, there is wine in there, but nobody drinks, uh, drinks it. So what some do, they open a door and they'll end it outside and ask God, ask Yahweh, the Messiah, to pour out his wrath upon the nations. And that is what I do. And I'm going to show you that uh, in the video, in, the, in, the, in the, my notes as well. The cup that we cannot drink from. During the Passover ceremony, there are four cups of wine. Each participant drinks from it. Each cup represents an aspect of Yahweh's saving work as expressed in Exodus 6, 2, verse 8. I will bring you out. 
I will free you, I will redeem you, I will take you as my own. Now there is also a fifth cup in the ceremony, one that no participant drinks, and this cup is called a cup of iniquity, or the cup of wrath. Now the use of this derives from Jeremiah 25, 15 to 17. And this is what the Lord says, and this of course is to Jeremiah, that God's, uh, Yahweh says this to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel said to me, Take from my hand this cup, filled with the wine of my wrath, and make all the nations to whom I sent you drink it. When they drink it, they will stagger and they will go mad because of the salt I will send amongst them. So I took the cup from the Lord's hand and made all nations to whom he sent me to drink. Now there is some debate about the fifth cup among modern Judaism. Older writings indicate a debate between rabbis about how many uh, cups to drink in the Passover. Others say, some say four, some say five, and so modern rabbis say to have four cups, but to fill a fifth uh, 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 that is not to be drunk. This cup is often referred to as Elijah's cup, as I said earlier, as the Jewish folklore closely associate a return of the prophet Elijah with the coming of the Messiah. Now the cup therefore represents a time of peace and prosperity for the Jews. And that is why the first three and a half years, that is what the enemy will try to do, will be relative peaceful for Israel. And this is of course to deceive them. Now the older traditions hold that this will be also include an outpouring of God's wrath on the enemies of God's people, hence the name Cup of Wrath. Now the current tradition is to pour it and wait to see if Elijah will come and drink from it, indicating that the Messiah's coming is near. Year after year, the cup goes undisturbed. Now, can you just imagine, I want you to take you to, to uh, Luke 22, and this is about Passover. And Jesus said to his disciples that, that night, How I desire to have this Passover with you. He had great desire uh, upon him to have this Passover with him. It was also the day just before his crucifixion. Now imagine Jesus presiding over the Last Supper, a traditional Passover meal that gives new significance to each cup. In a traditional Passover meal, the head of the household, uh, now in the ancient days, was in the time of Jesus, they were sitting at a table at the reclining position. Like I'm going to show you in the next video how it is. And they go all about it, you know. So they're actually leaning, they're reclining like that on the, uh, 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 actually on the left hand side because most people eat with the left hand side. So they're reclining in this, the, this position and of course just to, and then to eat with this hand. So everyone goes into that row in a reclining position. If, uh, I hope you understand what I tried to explain, but you'll see it in the next video. Now the first, first cup preceding the meal is the cup of sanctification based on Yahweh's statement. I will bring you out from under the burdens of Egypt. The second cup uh, preceding the first course, of course there are a few courses like you have our, our supper, we have the first course and the sec a second course of the main meal. Now the second cup precedes the first course is a cup of judgment or, uh, the, or deliverance. Yeah, based on God's statement, I will deliver you. 
Yes, from the slavery. I will deliver you from slavery to them. Luke 22, 17. Now, after that, he, the, 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 the first two is, uh, the cups is with a meal, and the second cup, after the supper, they have another two cups. After taking a cup, of course, this is then the, the, the third cup, taking a gate, thanks, and he said, take this divide among you and drink. The family would then take the meal together following the third cup, the cup of redemption based on Yahweh's statement, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. Luke 22 verse 20, in the same way after the supper, that is of course Jesus, he took the cup and he saying, this is the third cup, he said this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you drink. Now, um, many of us say it is communion, but uh, this is Passover. These are the pa pa Passover cups that we're talking about. The word communion is not in the Bible. The communion comes from a Catholic, the Catholic uh, doctrine. That is where communion comes from. Uh, not, but the word Passover is in the Bible. Now, yes, then the fourth cup is, the fourth cup is a cup of protection uh, based on Yahweh's statement. I will take you to be my people. Yeah, I will be your God. In fact, Pesha translate Passover uh, most literally means protection. Yeah, so that is, and of course Yeshua did not take of this, this, the fourth cup, because he, he is going to drink it new, he said it to them, because Jesus did not take this cup, for fighting the Passover, God's protection against a death angel, yes, God's protection against a death angel, that's the reason why Yeshua didn't take it, and also the reason because uh, Yeshua is going to drink it new into the kingdom, and he said in Matthew 26, 29, I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. This is also the cup of consummation. Consummation. Now on the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, just after he said it is finished, and they, the soldier went to see if everyone is dead. And they pierced Jesus just to make sure. And out of there came blood and water people. Blood and water. In Adam, in Adam's side, Yeshua opened a take a rip out of his side. And he brought forth Eve. And what came forth out of the side of Jesus? Consummation. And that is where it took place, people. And that is his bride. He died on the cross for his bride. And he's looking for the most important reason why Yeshua went to the cross is for his bride. For his bride, people, for you. We can all be the bride, his bride. But the Bible say many are called, but only few are chosen. I'm not talking about when you die in Christ, you will go to heaven. You can, will just make it to heaven. But with Yeshua's bride, there is a cost, people. There is a price to be paid. Yeah, and this, as I said, is also the cup of consummation. Yeshua did not drink this cup. This cup is used in every Israelite couple's wedding. Through Jesus, though Jesus drank no more the wine, he did drink from another cup. Just before I go to that cup, the, 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 the fifth cup, the, the Israelites, the Jewish uh, couple, the, 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 and the ancient wedding, 
they all always sealed it with the cup and it is actually with the fourth cup of consummation that they uh, they, they seal, seal it they uh, they uh, the father sends up a co contract and they will uh, in a year or two years time uh, the father when he's ready for uh, he built a house on his property for the couple and they will stay there for seven days and when he's ready you call and they say now you can go fetch your bride and they always seal this uh, marriage this contract with this couple of wine and that of course is the fourth cup and Jesus will do likewise when when uh, when we get to heaven and I can imagine Jesus seeing that cup when he goes into the dining room and on probably almost every day and they look at that one cup that one cup that is still upside down and he's looking with desire with great desire just to share that cup with us and just to drink it with us once again in the Father's kingdom. When I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom, how amazing will that day be, people? How amazing will that day be? Yeah. So then there is another cup that Jesus then drank from. Though Jesus drank no more wine, he did drink from another cup. You see, the traditional Passover has a fifth cup taken from Jeremiah. And that is the cup. This is what the Lord God of Israel said to me. Take from my hand this cup, fill it with the wine of my wrath, and make all the nations to go, nations to whom I sent you, uh, drink it. When they drink it, they will stagger and go mad or the sword I will send among them. So I took the cup from the Lord's hands and made all the nations to whom he sent it to drink. This is the cup of, uh, uh, of God's wrath, also known as Elijah's cup, as explained. Malachi prophesied that Elijah would return shortly before the coming of the Messiah and the day of God's wrath against all wickedness. Malachi 4 verse 5. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful uh, day of the Lord comes. As part of this Passover ceremony, the door is open and the head of the household says, Pour out your wrath on the world. In traditional ceremony, this cup is filled but not drunk. Not until the coming of Elijah. Nevertheless, Yeshua, Jesus, drank the cup. Matthew 26, 39 to 40. And this part, you always when, uh, when Jesus really become uh, anxious, he was going a little farther and he fell to his face to the ground and prayed. And at this point, Yeshua realized, realized the enormity people of what he is going, what he will be going through. And this enormity and the responsibility that he had on his shoulders. And he began to sweat blood, people. He sweat blood. He sweat blood. And he shout out in agony, no! He didn't realize. Father never told him about this when he was in heaven. And only when he realized this, the enormity sank in and he asked is it it is the cup of my father's wrath upon me that is what he realized and that is the uh, hammer hammer they sweat blood hammer hematoidrosis is a rare condition in which a woman uh, a, a, a human uh, being sweats blood now leonardo da vinci described uh, uh, a soldier who sweated blood before a battle. Yeshua experienced hematohydrosis while praying in the Garden of Gethsemane before his crucifixion. The weight upon him was so much people. Our sin was upon him. Every 
one sin was upon him. The world sinned from generation to generation. And he perspired blood. Hematohydrosis is a rare condition. And that is what happened to Jesus. That stress was so heavy upon him, people. And he perspired blood for you and me. He almost did not make it. And guess what? There in the Passover there is one promise. There's one promise that he will send an angel. He will send an angel. It's one of the seven promises. Actually, it's one of the first first uh, first promises. And God sent an angel to strengthen Jesus at that very moment. Because if he did not do it, he, he, the crucifixion would not have been possible because it was so much upon Jesus. People, that's what Jesus did for you and me. He perspired blood in that great agony. He experienced hematohydrosis while praying in the garden before his crucifixion. Again, Yeshua asked, my father, if it is possible, may the cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. He went away a second time again. My father, if it is not possible for the cup to be taken away, unless I drink, may it will be done. And that is the time when the angel came and strengthened Jesus. And he went back to the disciples probably for the third time. He asked them, pray with me, pray with me, pray with me. But when he came back the third time, they were all fast asleep. And this is not a time to sleep right now. Jesus needs us in this time of evil. The world is critical evil people. And Jesus need us to be awake, to seek Him and to pray, to pray. In all honesty, to pray. Jesus drank the cup of His Father's wrath against, against the nations. And this is what I want to say this right now to the post and the murderer people. You do not need to go through the, through the tribulation, the wrath of Yahweh. See Revelation 6 verse 17. It begins at the sixth seal, people. The wrath of God begins at the sixth seal. Yeshua drained the cup of wrath against the nations. 1 Thessalonians 5 9. For God has not appointed uh, uh, us to suffer wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus, Yeshua. I'm a Shia. People, make up your mind. You do not need to go through God's wrath. You, Jesus paid for that. All you need to receive it by faith. He is coming to fetch you. He promised that. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it not be so, I will come and I'll come and fetch you where I am. To be where I am. And that is Jesus' promise. It's not a funeral procession message that. That's a promise to you and me. That's the word the ancient father said to his, to his bride, preparing a place for him. And this is what Jesus would do in a time of wrath. It is finished. I don't want it to be much longer. I can say so much more, but I want to finish off with this word. When Jesus cried on the cross, it is finished. One of the most, uh, very last words uttered by Yeshua on the cross. And that's when he say it is finished. It is was right at three o'clock. At three o'clock at that time when, he, when Jesus died on the cross. It is finished. And then 
he let go and Jesus died. And right at the same time, the high priest would say the same thing. It is finished. The exact words that the high priest would say. Why, would you, uh, why is that? Because right at that time, more than two million people were in the city of Jerusalem. Two million people. And ten divided by ten. Ten per per persons in a family for a lamb. And over 200,000 lambs were slaughtered on that day. And imagine the work that they'd be done for 200,000 uh, uh, lambs to be slaughtered. On that day, right at three o'clock, when Jesus said it is finished, the high priest also said it is finished. All the lambs will, uh, are slaughtered at right at the time. Why? Because the evening is pass is Passover. Not as a high Sabbath, not actually pass or not Passover. It is the Sabbath. It is the Sabbath. It is the Sabbath. And also then the Passover lamp where he, Jesus had his previous night or at six o'clock the evening on Tuesday, six o'clock. That is when Jesus had it. Yes. And uh, by the way, that fourth cup also means praise. And when they went to the, uh, with the last, with the last cup, they went out in the garden of Gethsemane singing and praising. Hallelujah, sing the hallelujah, sing the praise. But on the cross, he said, it is finished. And uh, that, right at that, that, that moment, right at that moment, the high priest also said it was finished. Because they had to prepare uh, for the next three hours for the evening, uh, evening meal. But surely it was difficult on that day. Because right at Jesus' death, there were a great earthquake. And 33,000 people died on, on that day. 33,000, according to Josephus, died in a city and the surrounding area. Many died. So I suppose it was very, uh, probably impossible at night to, uh, to have, have the Passover. Yes, in John 19.30, it says it's one of the most important statements. The word, it is finished, are found only in John 19.30. The Greek word translated, it's finished, is tetelestai, in accounting term meaning paid in full. Yeshua is actually saying in that it is finished that the debt owed by man to his creator, Abba Father, because of Adam's sin, is finally and forever dealt with. Yeshua, with it is finished, is saying not only does he take away man's sin, but also now he removes it, and as far as he is, as to the West, it is finished, it is done, signed and sealed because of the blood of Yeshua. Hallelujah, people. That is my subject uh, today. And I would ask you to share this, this message to many as possible as you can. It's very important, the salvation message. It's a message of the cross. It's a message of the four cups, actually on the fifth cup. I spent a lot on the, fourth, uh, the fifth cup. Jesus paid that penalty and it was severe. And he said it was finished. And guess what? The cup, the cup, I don't have a cup actually, but I'll use it as this is a cup. And that cup is finished. It is empty. He drank it for you and for me. God bless you people. Love you all.